Today it has taken away my child. Taken my sister's daughter. That is the last and the, as the first and the last. I will not say again Londi no one from my sister will call me uncle. I'm very much sad. I'll be glad if defense will take its role and responsibility of what has taken place. Because I don't even know where did this fire start. I'm asking where were the guards? Because we used to guard the camps. Always. Always. My heart exhausted by my heart. On that exactly seen my doctor and the doctor. Exactly seen me here. My heart is sealed, is fire sealed. Father, thank you. Thank you very much. Greetings everyone. I greet everyone under this roof. Our principals of Defense Force. Minister and Deputy Minister. Minister and Deputy Minister. All fellow members of Defense Force. All the members of Defense Force, I greet you. I'm here for the Ndwalane family. He was my brother, just after me. I integrated living in the integrated defense force in You recruited him in 1994. I left defense force to join police force. I left him and my sister, who's a sergeant, Barbara Nokwecha. Barbara Nokwecha. She was working on the finance department. Now she's retired. He has left six children in Stembisu. His wife, Nontanta. He was the pillar of his family. We are greatly saddened by the as the family. And we have questions for defense. But that will be for the people who are supposed to ask. Because we cannot just ask anyone. There is a protocol. There are commanders that were there. They are the ones who are supposed to give an explanation to us. What saddens us most this thing happened on Friday. But we are only called on Tuesday. And it was not a, a briefing, a proper briefing. When we went to the base, they, they were like not sure or not ready to brief us. Because many people came to cry with us. We did not have information to tell 
those who came to cry with us. The family had no knowledge of what has happened. So, we didn't understand what was happening. We were awake since half past eight. In Mia Bank, we're there at half past eight. Up until this poor man got to. Up until two o'clock. And as na lo chesi jirik se we ate nothing. What does a poor man? Sinige zo uti sinzo shanga na sinla lo chesi ni bo five bo zo sasi jirik se la la. Bongo uye sotola la na pambi. We're told we'll get everything here when we arrive here. We didn't eat. We woke up at four, five. up until five, no one came, up until 12 o'clock in the midday, up until 12 o'clock midday, then a car arrived to fetch us. It showed like everything was planned. What was promised did not materialize. And when we arrived here, we were told that we'll be given food parcel for the road. But nothing was done. But we did not receive such. So we have been starving from Deben. We start from Deben to Scott. To Scott. That's where we started to buy ourselves off. That's when we started to buy things for ourselves. So Suga Scott. From Scott. So Sophia da. We arrived here. So Sophia seven and problem for us. We had a problem for accommodation. Who manages for exit without it to fast in Juba City. We didn't even get a breakfast even this morning. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, I'm not sure of the planning. Why people are grieving so much in their spirit? And now I find myself being tortured again. Lion of Judah, we will you. Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah, you are holy. about the passing on of 
our dear brother, who is just um, two or three years younger than me. Um, we received a very good reception and um, counseling from the Wingfield based in Cape Town up until we got um, the arrangements to come to this site. It was quite a very hectic journey and we um, arrived about 9 o'clock. We left Tuesday, we arrived at night about 9 o'clock and that day we slept here. Let me also thank everyone on this side, um, including the chaplain next to me, for the role they have played in making us feel welcome and comfortable. And at some stage, we didn't feel that we were bereaved because of the way they made us feel welcome. So thank you so much for all those arrangements up to this moment that we are standing here. Um, we are hurt and we didn't take it easy being left by our brother in this fashion or in this manner. Just a day um, when we were celebrating the, 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 the Heritage Day on the 24th, my brother on the, li on the right invited us, all the men in the family, all that are in Cape Town to celebrate and talk about our culture and remind us about the rituals, how they are performed. So I had to pick up Temilani from London and we go to his house. We little did we know that on that day I was picking him up for the last time. And we, 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 we spent the whole day, the whole afternoon, Chatting, he is one of the people that respects God. Because in whatever gathering that we are in, he will put God in front before he does anything. As much as he has got love for everyone, he has been so attached with the daughter next to me. He has got two children, um, a son and a daughter. The daughter has been on the way coming here saying, oh dad, why did you leave me when I was about to complete our, to, 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 to venture into doing a doctorate? She is in a verge of doing a doctorate or she has started a, a year of doing a doctorate. So she can't see herself finishing the doctorate without um, the support of the father. So we are in such a, a state where we is difficult to now even comfort me. But we just hope the words that were explained, that were expressed in here, that we will start, we will make, we will make sure that we make God as our shepherd and make sure that everything that we do, we put God in front of us as a family. It is very hard for us. We hope everything that is going to happen, it is going to be the wish and the will of God. Once again, thank you everyone that is involved in this. And as a soldier of Tembilani, we know that um, he has tried to be a soldier in our family, in us, but we said, you can't be a soldier, a soldier to us. Go and be a soldier where you are supposed. Go and protect the nation. So yeah, um, he's been a lovely person, I must say but we will miss him until we join him again. Thank you so much. This is the Mtekla family. Uh, he can't even uh, announce or pronounce his uh, brother's name because of his booty. 
On behalf of the family, his wife, children, I'm with a mother who gave birth to him. When we received the news, we were hurt or saddened. With this incident, we trust that the defense will tell us what really happened. Uh, again, we want to give thanks because of the cooperation we have found. We just plead with you that you continue to work with us till we lay our brother's bone. I was just talking with my brother in October. On the 15th, usually he will come home. He told me that he won't be able to come home because he's coming here to Northern Cape. And he said to me, my brother, I'll come back in November. And then we'll come and fetch you. We don't have many words as a Mtetwa family. We are just trusting that the defense force will do justice. Thank you very much.
Lord, he said, we'll ask you to come forward and address us. So I want to say that we are gathered here today to remember them. We have gathered here to remember the six that lost their lives around here. We also added 
the one who was not here but who is as much esteemed and loved as all of them, others. We have over We have over the years lost a number of soldiers, internally and abroad, because we volunteer to guarantee that South Africans will be kept safe. But we also take these lives not for granted, simply because our sons and daughters volunteer to serve. So for us, these are not people who are job seekers. These are people who give of themselves because they believe that serving in the Defense Force is guaranteeing other privileges, other rights to those that they don't even know. Sibonga Ama families which continue to donate their sons and daughters to the Defense Force to serve. And therefore, as we gather today, we can only say to you, you will find love because we will not forget you. We will not run away from the responsibilities of the children they have left. And Chief Sandap, I think that is why in every arm of service of the Defense Force we have the foundations. Because through these foundations, we take care of our own. We will not be there to, to wipe away every tear of a child who continues to ask the mother after the father. But we will be there to make sure that the child is well looked after and is well educated. We will make sure that in our halls, in our rooms, within our installations, the names of those who gave their lives for us and for this country shall be remembered. So we do not take any life for granted. We honor those who came before us. We honor the sacrifice of those who have just departed. We understand that even those who may be serving tomorrow. They serve in a place that sometimes takes life and sometimes rewards us for keeping our heads above the water, but for also ensuring that South Africa as a country continues to do well. These are the men and women who have taken an oath who have stood in front of their commanders and their colleagues, who have said to us, and I quote, I pledge to serve and defend my country and its people in according to the Constitution. I pledge to serve in honor. I pledge to serve with dignity. I pledge to serve with courage. I pledge to serve with integrity. And that pledge we take serious. And that is why in their name, we must continue to honor the pledge they took in making sure that never ever are we unable to come to families and give It was not informed that we will take that matter up. And I want to say to the Army that you have done well in informing and ensuring that all the other family members arrive on time and are looked after. Please make sure that you do to the family that has complained today here. Because we are a defense force that honors and respects everybody, all races, all genders all beliefs, all languages, all cultures, 
we shall not make a mistake of discriminating against one family. So I take, I take the blame and I will make sure that that family is given the responses and the answers and is well looked after as it should, as all the families should. We want to say that when we serve, when we come into this world, we have dreams. And sometimes our dreams are realized and sometimes our dreams are not realized. So my daughter, go on, do your thesis. Go on and know that sometimes if you are strong in spirit, that is what the Deputy Minister was telling me just now, that helps you ride the rough waves of this world. Do that doctorate in the honor of your father. Where we can help, we shall stand right there behind you. Now, umlilo, we now know we cannot do without because without fire there is no life. But we also know that with fire there is death. We are told in the scriptures that when God wanted to cleanse the land, there's a time when he sent fire. We know that on the another occasion he sent water to do the same thing. So we will respect the elements we will make sure that our children do not um, lose their lives through the elements. Whatever it is that this base needs, we will look at. But we will also make sure that in our trainings, we take care that in whatever contingency, we are ready to preserve the lives of those who are willingly giving their lives, putting them in their hands in the name of the scholarship. I want to say to the wives, the daughters, who have lost their fathers, I want to say to the mothers who have lost their sons, and the daughters who have lost their mothers. Bare in my language, mudimu agaso kofi murwalo ohosola. God always gives you what he knows you can carry. They say also that in whatever darkness we may be wondering, in whatever pain we may be feeling, the sun shall rise. We will take heart. We want to say that sometimes those of us who know the pain of losing kids, because the most painful thing is to lose a child when you are a parent. Because children are supposed to bury us, not us bury our children. So we stand with the parents who lose their children at this age. But we also stand with the children who grow up because we took the decision as soldiers to defend. Sizo hamba nani, sizo bamba nani. All of us must know that whatever it is, a personal choice, a sacrifice to save the nation, that is what we respect. We want to say to you that sometimes, sometimes we lose our faith when we lose those who were our anchors. Sometimes we think that the pain that we feel the darkness that engulfs us when we lose those who were our strengths, who were our futures, that there is no replacement. And sometimes it is amazing that God provides the answer. Not spiritually, physically. For those who believe, we want to believe that you will not walk alone, you will not just see the soldiers, you will see in your children the deeds of their fathers and their mothers. You will see 
in the fathers and the mothers who are left the strength to carry on the burden that was carried by those who were departed. Kupsungu kona, Nati, even though we had not met most of those who have departed, it hurts because we become parents on your behalf when they are within our premises. So we see Nati, but we understand that our pain as the Department of Defense cannot be the same pain that the families feel. We will walk, as I said, next to you. We will make sure that the dependents are looked after. We will make sure that the kids go to school. General, I want you to take that seriously. That whatever the children of the departed want to study, we shall make possible as the defense because we never walk away from our problems. We don't walk away from our responsibility. That two-year-old will have fathers and mothers too. That two-year-old will have cousins amongst the children here. That two-year-old will know how to laugh because he, she will get the stories and the triumphs and the, the strengths of the father that the mother might not even know. Because these men and women here in uniform will be uncles and granddads of the two-year-old. We will not walk away. We will shoulder our responsibilities. And if we find, after we have completed our responsibilities and getting the report of what exactly happened, we will come to the families again and explain. We do know that this fire was not started in this camp. We do know that this fire came from outside. We do know that many fires will continue to rage here. What we want to do is protect this space better than we have protected it. Now, next to the seas, next to the big rivers, you would not understand a location like this one where water is scarce, where the taps as you want to fill your bucket even start dripping ungakai to Alice. So water in this area is a problem. It might be one of the issues, but I am saying we will wait until we know. And when we know the full story, the families, even before we go anywhere, the families will be the ones that we say, this is what we have investigated, this is what we know. This is what took away from you and us this loving spirit, this giving spirit that came to us. So Kibatakiri, it is not just the families that has lost. Chief Ami, we, we bring our sympathies. Those who were directly involved, General Dube, we bring our sympathies to you. Uh, Chief of Staff, our sympathies to you. Sec Dev, you will have to pop out the money unsympathetically to make sure that we cover the loopholes that are now found and everything that has now caused us to be where we are today. Someday, see Akolis, see we will not run away. We will also expect that you will also not run away from us. The same dedication that we got from the men and women who have served us and left us in uniform, we will still enjoy from the families. We will not run away from you because we do not know what the future holds. And if Asibamban, yes, Zandra, yes, Umzalz, if we do not keep on making sure that the defense force remains strong, well-trained, well-resourced, you might not have a country to move. And that is why every little bit that we find from each and every individual in the family of defense, we appreciate. Each life causes us pain because perhaps if we had all everything that we wanted, we would have bases 
in every province and people would not have to go into the desert to try and get the training that they need. But we would still expect that that discipline that we need to get continues to be. It is never easy to address people by failing. We will go and visit the graves. Yes, we will go and touch the stones. But that hug, that voice, that laughter will continue only in our hearts and in our minds. Now, I know it is very difficult, but I would say that, uh, see, if you found love, treasure it. Hold on to it. Don't lose the memories of your husband. Don't lose the smile, because believe you me, they stay with you. Pass them on to the little girl. Pass on them on to those that come, because somebody who is as loving as you describe your husband can only bring forth and help to bring stronger families which we need. My daughter in the Defense Force, follow this example. Love your wives. Cuddle your wives. Wives, love your husbands. Because Asa is what tomorrow brings. Unga pumi endlini ukumbili kumbele no 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 partner. Because you do not know what might happen. So we treasure the memories of a husband who was loving to the family because we now know that that daughter will grow up even in the absence of the father. Balanced, knowing Ukuti Yena, they come from a loving couple that probably also was teaching this child how to respect. So, Sonipanani, Tandanani, but soldiers, yeah, those of, of us who come from the other part, don't just become members of the same unit, become comrades. Because indeed, if you are facing the same enemies, you become comrades. Die for one another, protect one another, warn one another, and make sure that the systems work so that as comrades in this uniform, we can continue to pick up the spears, the rifles, the boots, walk in those boots of those who are departed. And the incomplete jobs, the incomplete dreams, let them continue because we are there as the South African National Defense Force. Forget language, forget religion, Forget gender, become comrades, and we will save South Africa better. Ekare legacy dilek, ekare di peluzalona di kalung, hutloba wim. But knowing that we are there, somewhere in the corners, even if we are not talking to you, remembering. One day we will have streets that we will name in this area, in the same base, after these ones. Because we will not let their names be forgotten in the South African National Defense Force. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, this time, we are going to have a benediction, but I think uh, we need to give one to one just a, a song because they are, uh, these members were with them. And I know for a fact that we've been allowing people to sing, but to make sure that they go back even themselves healed as we have given the family to mourn. Uh, but we'll have a song now from one to one.
as Chaplain Mutlubu comes forward to do the benediction. I don't know how we're gonna do this now. Huh? Oh, no. What are you gonna do with your mic now? Hmm? Where's my mic? What are you gonna do with your mic? No, we have, have to get it. Can you make them sit? What are you gonna do with your mic? No, they have to stand. Oh, can you make them sit? Like, can't. These people are doing this. People are doing this. People are doing this. People are doing this. When will you be visiting the site? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guy Martin from Defence Wheel. I have a couple of questions. I'd like to know uh, who, how many soldiers were injured and how they're doing. 
also what equipment was lost or damaged and will that equipment be replaced? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The initial question from ENCA with regard to the establishing of security uh, process. Yes, indeed, we do have uh, a process. When it comes to disaster management, we have got uh, uh, fire brigades that looks after our bases. There are fire breaks that had been made, but the ferocity of the fire itself was such that uh, the fire jumped even the, the fire brigades, uh, the fire belts. The, we had five units of the fire brigade that was responsible for fighting fire, and they did everything that they could, but unfortunately the direction of the wind kept on changing. Hence, we had this big loss in terms of both equipment and personnel. I take it that uh, that is the first thing that uh, uh, you wanted to know if uh, there was capacity for us to deal with such uh, eventuality. The second question, uh, which was coming from uh, Defense Web, is with regard to the number of personnel and equipment. We have so far checked and uh, we had 19 members that were treated with regard to equipment we have taken stock we have lost uh, camping equipment including beds we have had also a number of uh, combat equipment as well as weapon systems in terms of the details of those that had been lost the immediate division commander general Dube will provide the full spectrum of what had been lost including the smallest items in terms of personal equipment that our members had suffered so yes indeed we have made effort now from our depot to replace all the equipment that had been lost so far up to yesterday we have done quite extensive replacement of the equipment. I want you to take note that uh, when you go to war, you go to war with the understanding that uh, at one time you will have to lose equipment. Hence you must have depth. And that is the depth from where you take what is required to replace. And we have got a concept of relief in line. Those that we have lost will be replaced by other members that will continue to fight and therefore, in this case, because it's an exercise, we are going to continue with this exercise and have the members uh, do as they can in order to pay tribute to those that we have lost, because there is no any other tribute that we can pay to our people than to have a successful exercise. And that is what we promise, and that is what we want to reassure all South Africans that uh, we will continue to be that guardian and that insurance for you. So we're not disturbed or perturbed by the adversity. We will continue and we'll plan because this is the preliminary part of our exercise. Uh, the other issue that was raised <laughs> by Erika is with regard to the equipment which we will also uh, say we will replace it is not that we must go and buy. 
much as I've said that uh, we will dig deep into our stocks and replace that equipment with both the prime machine equipment that had been lost, we will replace with the ones that are currently at stock. I think uh, that's the first minister, unless if there is anything else that I left out. Well, we will be visiting the site. You are also aware that um, there is nothing that is conclusive uh, that we will give you today. We're still looking at all the factors. It is a fact that the fire started from the mines. It is also a fact that the way, uh, what do you call these uh, fire extinguishers? It is also true that when the wind changed, that there was enough forethought to go and clear off a space, burn it quickly so that it becomes the safe area where the troops could run to. So it is not absolutely true that we are going to go uh, witch hunting. We are going into a board of inquiry. We will get a report. And if anybody is found to have been responsible or negligent, that then we will take to him. We do know that there was a second fire. We now know that that second fire um, in the communities that they have found whoever had started that second fire. Uh, whether that person, we can claim anything from, from any loss that we may have suffered on our side, that is a different story. But in cases like this, we want to bury those that gave their lives in peace. We want to honor them. We want to look at what we can do. It is also true that we are looking at the review of the defense review of 2015, which we were never able to really actualize because, yes, uh, resources. But maybe it is an opportune time to also relook at how we are structured and whether there are certain things that we can augment. One of the things that I think we need here, um, Chief Sandalf, is the possibilities of making sure that we dump water here. Because even as they were trying to refill, there was no water coming because of the arid nature of this area. So even as we want to look for who, who do we beat up, the truth of the matter is that life here is difficult. And it is also one of those bases that we must maintain because training from this particular area is prestigious training. It's difficult. It's not nice. It's what makes soldiers soldiers here. So we will continue with that. And we are hoping that, uh, yes, the exercise will follow. Uh, it will be concluded that we will do well, that in the name of those who are departed, those who are left will, will actually excel and make sure that we get very good leaders out of there. But yes, it is a lesson. In every adversity, there is something that you pick up that makes you stronger to the end. Thank you very much, Minister. Second round, um, the gentleman in brown, <coughs> the gentleman in grey, the lady, we have not had a lady. Oh, Arthalika. Well, no, Erika is a lady. Oh, no, Erika. Go ahead, Sisi. Good afternoon, Minister. I just want to ask you a question. Can you see from the Sunday Times? I just want to know how soon before the fire, we can notify who alerted um, to the possibility or to the condition of the fire. What was done after you received the alert to try and evacuate? Because we've heard from disaster management team around that they got an alert the day before and we were able to evacuate. Did you guys receive the same alert? What were you able to do? Thank you, Kainzile. Uh, the gentleman. No, no, no. Sanjuk together with the ENCA? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. sorry. He's from Africa. All oh, right. Hey, thank you very much, Minister. How are you? Uh, look, Minister, the first question, oh, my name is Luma from the Citizen. The, the first question that I would like just to find out from you is, uh, uh, there's, there's been an issue where you, you were standing on the stage and you promised the families that you were going to you take blame and that you were going to make sure that the children of those who departed are fully taken care of. Isn't that some sort that you are just saying this so that you can calm the situation down? Because most of them, they are saying that they are not aware that this thing happened on Saturday and they were only called today to come here and uh, they were told to come at 4 o'clock. So isn't it maybe the political a bit? Thank you. ENCA? I'll, 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 I'll <coughs> respond to you. 
When the fire happened, the NGO Gift of the Givers was the first to seemingly um, give assistance to SANDF members. Is that not an indictment to the department that the department itself was not able to assist um, its members? And um, just to find out, does the leadership of the SANDF feel like um, the deductions that have been made to the budget of the SANDF might have led to a co to what happened, um, whether it be the the base itself not being ill being ill equipped, or in any way does the leadership feel like the de uh, deductions were led to what happened uh, uh, at the base? I'll Thank you. That. The gentleman in brown. Thank you, Minister. My name is Andre Jacobs. I'm from the Kalahari Memorandum. I just want to check with you, uh, Minister. Uh, the decision not to withdraw the soldiers, uh, uh, that decision is based on the fact that the soldier must be able to stomach this type of conditions. However, the general has said that this type of, the magnitude of the fire, the, 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 the fire tracks or the fire belts are in good condition, uh, but they were not able to handle the particular magnitude of this fire. So it means this particular fire was unprecedented in scale and in magnitude. Uh, I'm just worried because in the area, Hatulupila, in the Tanzabani municipal area, we had fires that we can say uh, were unprecedented in terms of the magnitude and the scale. Uh, so uh, we had a lot of fires in the past month in this area before the particular one, and we even had fires in the Bisispan area yesterday. So I'm just checking, are we not putting the soldiers at risk? Uh, we have the, the proper, the fire belts are in a good condition. We have proper evacuation drills in place, but should a fire uh, uh, come with a similar unprecedented magnitude, uh, will we be able to handle that, uh, or are we not putting the soldiers unnecessarily in the firing line again? Thank you. Uh, we'll take ENCA and then ask the panel to respond. Yeah, just two so brief questions. Um, what now for the family members who lost their, their loved ones? Will they be taken care of? Uh, secondly, what will be done to ensure this doesn't happen again? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Minister. Over to you, ma'am. Um, can I respond to that question? Uh, are we putting unnecessary... Um, are we unnecessarily putting the soldiers at risk because we have fires that are unprecedented? I don't think we are. Even before the fires, soldiers are sent here deliberately because this is a tough military training site. So, if the soldiers run away, what about the communities in this area? Should we uproot the communities too? What we do need to do is to carefully relook at the situation, plan accordingly, see what is. And that is why I deliberately spoke about damming, making sure that we have enough water in the base that will be looking out for those contingencies. In fact, it might also get us into the space of using grey water for reuse because then we will be able to save resources and do other things. I don't think we should, we should say that uh, we stop training. No. Uh, becoming a soldier is not like opting to sit behind a desk. And even amongst those who sit behind the desk in the military sometimes face the risks. So we will not be stopping that, but we will not be taking unnecessary risks because we will make sure that whatever it is that has happened. But also, perhaps we should start looking at the, the fires are unprecedented. The speed was also very interesting. But is South Africa the only one in these days of climate change that is experiencing fires? Uh, Cape Town has experienced many fires before. People have died. Uh, vegetation has been We can expect more fires to rage. Uh, islands have disappeared. People have died throughout the world. South Africa is just one of the dots that make up the world. So we must be resolute. We must go back to the basics, replan, relook at the resources. Earlier on, you said. Uh, and that question also is 
what Erika was asking. Yes, Treasury does not have an infinite pocket. Yes, we must relook as, as the family of defense at our, our priorities, begin to see what is of utmost importance for us to focus our resources at, what can we divert in the short term to do. As to the prime equipment, Chief Sandaf has responded, it would be um, very slow of the leadership of the Defence Force to take all the equipment and put it in one base all at the same time. So you always hold something and more things in reserve. You have tr equipment that you use for training and you have equipment that you will take out to shoot anybody. So in other words, if anybody thinks that the, this fire is a country, I, they have to think again because we will move them back. So nobody will say we are vulnerable here today because the equipment has bent and South Africa cannot be defended. It is defended. There is enough that we can go throw on to defend this country. As for training, we will intensify and maybe what we will do is get back to fire drills and whatever, whatever. But the questions that the two young men put to me sounded like, you know, we could blame game. We're not blaming anybody. We are into an inquiry. We will find out what happened. The fire was not started with us. Um, they will respond to you. And uh, the report I have preliminarily is that uh, two hours before the time, we, we know. We also know that defense in this area is part of the neighborhood watch. They exchange uh, information. Uh, if a fire breaks out, defense itself goes out to help. On the question, Antwina, because I want to take it away from you, of the, uh, the, the uh, donations from the gift of the givers, I respect that organization very much. They do a great job. When they made the offer, I spoke to the gift of the givers and said uh, the communities around the base are more vulnerable than the members of defense. Please divert that to the communities because the chief of the National Defense Force has other stores where he can draw food and blankets and tents and whatever for the members here. But the communities out there need what the gift of the givers has to give more than the defense. And that is why we asked them not to give us, but to prioritize the people out there. Because who are we protecting if we eat first before the people eat? Um, the, all the other, Antwena, can you? Thank you, Minister. Uh, with regard to the issue raised by the Minister, uh, I signed the FA this week regarding the additional bowls because uh, this place is a water scarce area and for us to be able to continue to sustain the base we said we need to get additional bowl and uh, that is what we are going to sink. Secondly, there is a question from uh, Kanyisil uh, in terms of the length of the alert. We got the alert at 11.45 that there are fires that had been picked up and uh, it started affecting us around 13.45 and we were starting to, we were prepared. And by the time the fire reached our, our point, we fought the fire. But as the minister indicated, the wind and other elements, the speed of the, the, the wind was around 74 kilometers per hour and the direction kept on changing. Hence, the most damage was done at the least expected areas. So by the time we turned our fire bowsers to, to the area where it is now completely out of where we started, then we, 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 we were found wanting because it turned again. So we were chasing the fire and uh, that is why it was difficult to end. Coming to the question by uh, Lungi, uh, in terms of Will the children of the deceased be taken care of? The South African National Defense Force has the Education Trust. And that Education Trust is over and above what the government provides. We 
we provide education to member, the children of members that passed on. The government provides the necessary contributions to the members. And the Education Trust takes kids from as early as pre preschool until when they complete their, their studies. Uh, we have got, uh, last year we had uh, one member that we took from high school and currently is a qualified medical doctor, educated by the Education Trust. When we have the golf days that we invite people, the proceeds of those golf days we throw into the Education Trust. And the minister had also indicated that she is going to help us mobilize more funds because we don't want our people, if they perish, then their children are not taken care of. Because uh, the pension funds and the rest might not necessarily be used towards that effort. It depends, it's in the discretion of those who are remaining behind. But the Education Trust, because it paid directly into the school, so there is no one who can come and then abuse that fund. So, yes, we will look after the children of those that uh, were left behind. That is the, the issue that uh, I thought maybe Minister should uh, <coughs> ask for. The decision not to withdraw, it's not that we are reckless. We have done our appreciation and we have said it is safe for our people to continue with the exercise. Let me quickly tell you now that uh, the fires that we picked up again yesterday, we managed to control it because uh, we are now ready and we were forewarned in time and we had placed our equipment to fight the fire in collaboration with the local authorities. I think those are the few There's questions. Uh, one question about that, one family. The, I spoke to the family um, and I promised that I would go into it um, to try and find out why all the arrangements for all the other families were done in time and the communications was fine but this particular family is complaining. So we'll go into that and I apologized because I took responsibility because one family was saying it wasn't treated well. I did not point a finger of wrongdoing at anybody because when you lead, you don't have to, you take responsibility. If I do find that this family was singled out for ill treatment, we will deal with it. But if I find that there was a misunderstanding or whatever, we will still do what is right by that family. I will personally go and apologize to that family after finding out exactly what has happened. For now, I cannot say to you, I'm going to have a, a fight with the army, or no. I need to find out what has happened. I need to know exactly why or everybody else has no problem, had no problems with the travel arrangements and the accommodation, but one family had. So we'll go into that and we'll sort that out. Uh, okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, I apologize. We missed the one that says uh, the budget cuts a factor in, um, in this fight. <coughs> this is, it has nothing to do with the, 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 the budget cut. Uh, this could have happened anywhere, anytime. The fact that we were ready shows that uh, all the five units as per the requirement, that is the fire brigade units were in place and the vehicles and the systems were operational. So I, I do not see any correlation between the budget cut and this incident. Yes, from time to time we had been talking about the prime machine equipment and saying that uh, you South Africans must just tell us what type of a defense force you would like to have. But that in itself it's not suggesting that we couldn't carry on. That's why even this exercise, we planned it and we were sure of success with the equipment that we have. 
So the budget cut, yes, we need more, more money because we need to rejuvenate. But the budget cut is not a factor in this incident and accident. Thank you, General. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Minister, may I thank you all. And then um, we, we, are, we are pressed for time. Can we get an update on those who were injured? The three. Because uh, we have uh, the, the total number of those that there were others as well, but the three that are taken to pieces. Are they still in hospital? Have they been released? Sorry, I'm the deceased. Six or seven? Six. Six. Who turned over multiplier? No, there are seven pictures. No, it's six. 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 six died from the, from the fire incident, and the one passed on during that period on natural causes. Just an update of those who were injured. Are they still in hospital? Yes. Division Commander. I thank you, Minister. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we still have one member that is still at the hospital uh, in Bloemfontein, and uh, I've heard that uh, the member is recovering very well. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Much appreciated, and enjoy the rest of your day in Loata. We'll see you in Also, thank you, I'm becoming. Thank you, I'm becoming. Thank you very much. No. 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 No, no, it's not a question though. It's just uh, there was a lot of misunderstandings earlier because we were sent to a different place and we were made to wait there for hours and we were told that the minister is going to come and nothing happened. So we just wanted to put that. Uh, it's a bit unacceptable how the media itself was treated. Let, let me deal with it, uh, okay. outside ministers.